So all of the modern church's music departments are using backing tracks and stems to enhance their music. But has this become the downfall of church music as we know it? Are churches really just doing karaoke? In this video, I'm gonna tell you the truth about churches using backing tracks and what it's doing to church music and church musicians. So over the past few years, stems and backing tracks have become a really huge part of church music. And the pandemic really accelerated this because a lot of churches started live streaming and those live streams will tell off on you and your music department really easy. It puts all of those bad notes and, you know, misaligned timings and all of that in high definition. And a lot of churches start to understand this when they would look back at their streams and hear all of those mistakes. And then they learned that using backing tracks and stems was a good remedy for this. And even before the pandemic, it was a really big thing. I remember some years ago, I was invited to this church service to play like an organ solo or something. I believe it was like a anniversary program, like an evening program or something like that. But I got there early to check out the music equipment that they had because I didn't know about the church and specifically check out the organ because y'all know them church organs be busted up and you know, all crazy or whatever. But when I got there, the service had already started. So I just kind of sat in the back and just listened to what was going on. Now also it was raining like really bad outside. It was one of those weekends where we had some major thunderstorms come through the city and it was just like really, really nasty outside. And remember this point because it plays a huge part in the story and I'm gonna come back to it. So I was sitting there in the back listening and thinking to myself like, man, they really sound like really good up here. Like the musicians are on point. They're locked. These singers, they got all of these harmonies down. It was a song that I knew. So I was familiar with how it was supposed to go and they were like nailing it. So I looked on the church program and I saw that they were supposed to sing two songs and then it was going to be my time to come up and play this organ solo. So they started singing their second song, right? And in the middle of this song, we heard this really big roar of thunder outside. Remember, I told you it was raining really bad outside, but we get rain like that in the city all the time. So no one really thought anything major of it. But like 30 seconds later, a big lightning strike happened outside and it blew the power out in the church for only like a second or two. And you know, when that happens, it cuts the power to everything. So all of the music instruments went off the amps and all of that kind of stuff only for a second, but most of those things boot back up really quickly. But you know what doesn't boot back up as quickly? A laptop that has backing tracks on it. So they were still singing and stuff with the instruments because they came back on really quickly, but the backing tracks had backed out because they hadn't booted back up yet. And when I tell you those singers started sounding like five o'clock traffic in a busy city, like it was just absolutely crazy. But this really illustrates one of the biggest issues with using backing tracks. But it also illustrates one of the biggest advantages of using. Now I'll talk more about the advantages and disadvantages in a minute, but let me first talk about this thing where people think that the use of backing tracks has become sort of like this big downfall of church music as we know it. But first, if you're getting value out of this video or if you've gotten value out of any of my videos on this channel, do me a quick favor and hit the like button on this video. That really helps this video to spread and it helps with the YouTube algorithms and all of that kind of stuff. And I'd greatly appreciate it. So honestly, I think that church music has been on a really steep decline for years. I think things like money and popularity and fame got the best of a lot of the gospel music and CCM artists and they just kind of stopped being creative years ago. They stopped writing and composing music from the heart and instead went to writing stuff that kind of got them the bag, so to speak, and kept them relevant, and it started to show. And it was happening at the same time that church itself was on sort of a decline, which made the whole thing a lot worse. So with that, we got a lot of this overproduced music with all of these huge orchestrations and four to five, six, seven layers of sound design and seven, eight guitar parts in it and you know, three, four, five keyboard parts in it and like these really intricate vocal harmonies and all of that. And while some of it sounded good, especially to a lot of us musicians because we tend to like stuff like that more, it still lacked feeling and heart. And not only that, this sort of intricate music like that eliminated 
sort of the average church with maybe one, two, three musicians at most from being able to do it because it was just out of their league. And that kind of church with the one or two or three musicians is the majority of churches pretty much around the world. And that put these sort of churches in sort of like a pickle because either they had to opt for just doing all of the same old songs from like the 90s and early thousands and some of them doing songs from the 80s and 70s even. Or they had to opt for going to something new and sort of incorporating backing tracks so that the songs that they would perform actually sounded like the stuff that they, people would hear on the radio. So many of them today have just gone with the option of using backing tracks so that they sound at least somewhat modern. So has this whole thing of the use of backing tracks and stems and all of that been the downfall of church music as we know it? No, not really. I mean, like I said, it was pretty much on a decline well before then. Now, about some of the advantages of using backing tracks, one of the things that you need to understand is that music has always been one of the biggest draws for people who want to attend church, particularly good music. And what you also have to understand is that there has been a sort of new standard set as far as people's expectations of what they want to hear in church music when they show up at church. So that old foot stumping, tambourine shaking, upright piano sound stuff is just not what people want from church music anymore, generally speaking. So one of the biggest advantages of churches using backing tracks is something that I sort of already mentioned already, and that is it allows a lot of these churches to be able to meet that new standard and do more of the modern music without having these large setups and large music departments where you have 10, 12 musicians on staff, but you could do it with like two or three and still sound pretty modern. Now, I also mentioned live streams earlier and many, if not most churches have started live streaming in some form or fashion. You know, you even have some churches that just use somebody's cell phone and you know, go live on Facebook or something like that and streams their services. And with the live stream, you just cannot have your music department coming on there sounding like any kind of way, sounding like five o'clock traffic, like I mentioned earlier. And you know, y'all are real quick to clown these live stream churches talking about how they sound like trash and all of that. So another advantage of churches, music departments using backing tracks is that it helps them sound a whole lot better on live streams. Now, as far as some of the disadvantages of using them, what you have to understand is that using backing tracks is not just a really easy thing for everybody. You have to know how to set them up. You have to know how to run the software that's going to play them. You have to have some sort of in-ear system so that your band members and your musicians can be able to hear them to be able to play with them properly. You also have to have band and musicians that can play properly to backing tracks. I mean, there's still a lot of drummers out there, for example, that don't know how to play with click tracks and all of that. And not only that, you have to have a budget to be able to buy them if you don't have someone that is making them for you. And even then you probably still have to pay them. So one of the biggest disadvantages of using them is that there can be a really big learning curve in learning how to incorporate them and it could be a huge financial curve as well. Now, while I don't suggest or recommend that anyone use backing tracks as a method to cover up lack of ability or capability, and instead just simply use them as enhancements, the fact of the matter is that a lot of churches do use them that way to cover up like just their you know lack of capability. And because of this, a lot of musicians and singers alike have started to stop working as hard at their craft because they know that the backing tracks are gonna be there to cover them up. It's like the singers have the words and lyrics on a projector screen or on an iPad or something, so why learn the lyrics? And the musicians and the band have, you know, the parts in the backing track, so why do I need to shed as hard on these parts? And this is, to me, probably at least in the top three disadvantages of using backing tracks and that is because it makes a lot of musicians lazy and they stop growing because of it. Now, a lot of musicians use backing tracks in bands and such that they play in outside of church. And many church people frown upon this thing of church musicians playing secular music and playing in secular bands and all of that. But should they? Well, that's something that I've done a video about and you can go here and check out that video right now.